Bike Project Management Tutorial. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you how you can use Rike to manage all of your projects. So having said that, let's just jump into the video. So as you can see right here, I'm on their Wayne website. And for those of you who don't know what Rike is, it is a project managing tool. So let's get into it. Now, Rike is free, but there is a pricing plan as you can see right here. So let's go over that real quick. And also they have a bunch of different products that we can use such as automations, integrations, Kanban boards, approvals, dashboards, AI as well. So here are the pricing plans. So there are five pricing plans. We have the free one, the team, the business, the enterprise, and the pinnacle. These two are going to be excluded for now because, you know, they are for big organizations. And in order to get the price, you have to contact them and, you know, make a deal. But for now, we have these three plans right here. We have the free plan, the team, and the business. The free plan, of course, is free. In it, you get the web desktop and mobile application. You get task and task management, board views, tables, active task limitations. And then we have the team ones, which is going to be $980 per user per month. And in it, you get 2 to 25 users, unlimited projects, unlimited tasks, unlimited custom fields, unlimited request forms, unlimited free views, 20 free collaborators and the list just keeps going on and on so you can go ahead and pause this video right here and view all of these different features but yeah and then we have the business one which is going to be 24 dollars per user per month in it you can get up to 5 to 200 users and you get folder and structures and nesting projects cross dragging project blueprint custom items and to over 200 automation actions per user per month and AI risk prediction and work creation as well. So as I said before, you can go ahead and compare all of these different features by just simply clicking on this button right here. And then it will give you even more in-depth features and all of the sub features that Rike offers. So you can see you have a bunch of different options, but most of them, you won't be needing them since you are going to be using either Teams or Business. So let's go ahead and get started for free for now and click on get started and here we just simply enter in our business email and once you've done that just enter in your full name your mobile number your company name and you should be good to go and then just select how many people work at your company so we're going to select the first one and how many people do you plan to collaborate with we're going to select the first one and click on next what is your team or department you can start writing over here to get suggestions and what is your job role so right here we have a bunch of different options so for now we're going to select project management and over here we're just simply going to go ahead and say project owner and click on next and after that how experienced are you so go with beginner intermediate or advanced whichever one you feel comfortable with i'm going to select beginner for now and then over here you just enter in the email address of your co-workers or your team members and then just hit next give it a couple of seconds it's going to prepare your workstation or workspace and you should be good to go and here we are so here is the dashboard as you can see right here you have some options to complete you know this little checklist then you have your inbox over here here you will get all the messages and notifications that you have which you can access over here from the left hand side and if you click on more you get my to do's reports calendars created by me stream and all of that then you have your space over here where you have personal space here you can go ahead and create your own workspace and in each workspace you can create projects and folders by clicking on create project or folder so let's go back to our dashboard so actually let's go over here underneath spaces and create a new space so since this is the personal space here you can create your own you know project files like to do tasks and stuff like that but you already have my to-do list over here here you can go ahead and add different items you know create your own to-do list over here you will have calendar and all of those as i said before and then down below you have your space so here instead of personal uh you can go ahead and click on open in a separate tab or click on these three buttons or click on the arrow and open the drop down menu and then just hit the space button and it will create a new space or what you can do is click on browse other spaces right it's going to open up this little tab right here here you can go ahead and browse other spaces so no public spaces available so we'll just leave it over here for now and click on add a space and here we can go ahead and create a space so here we have some templates so here we have different templates as you can see right here process management archive teams uh client projects software development simple agile 
if you want, you can click on get started with get started with the basic ones, you know, and then you have project management tools like these ones. Not a whole lot of different options when it comes to templates, although I would have preferred if they had more options, but you know, it depends on you. So we have these two right now for project management, since that is what we are looking for. So we're going to click on preview to let's go ahead and preview the simple agile one. So here we have simple agile board type of project management where we have this little board. Uh, I don't think I can move it. It's just, I think it's an image. So we'll leave it at that and we'll actually go ahead and create it. So let's go ahead and select that simple agile, which is this one and click on select and we'll use this. It's loading up. So give it a couple of seconds. So here we go. Everything is loaded up. So right here, uh, we have two options. This is the scrum structure and this is the Kanban structure right here, right? So both of them will have different options. And here is the table view and here is the board view. It, you will have both of these options in both of these different projects and folders. And within each of these folders, you will have a long term backlog. As you can see right here, they have different folders within them and that contain different files. So right here, this is the Kanban example of it. Here you have your tasks, you have your in progress completes on hold and canceled. Looks pretty simple. And within that, you have a long term backlog, which you know you can go ahead and keep all of your tasks over here. So pretty simple. Uh, over here, let's say you want to you know add different tasks. So of course you can go ahead and click on add different tasks over here by just simply clicking on this button right here. This will edit it, but let me just go ahead and delete it. And here we can go ahead and click on add new task to add new task. Here we have the task number one. And here we can go ahead and leave it at that. And that will create your task. And in it, you can go ahead and assign different options right here. So we have status. So this is a new one. So here we have in progress complete and all of that. You can, you know, select which workflow you want to add it to. Then you have your assignee where you can go ahead and assign the task to a specific person. And then you can just simply go ahead and click on send invite and they'll be invited into your team. And then you have your set date, which is going to be your starting date and your due date. So let's say it starts at 25th to 26th or actually 26th to 27. There we go. And now over here you have your duration. And if you click on more, it's going to open up more options right here where you have importance. So let's say it is a high priority author is going to be over here, created date ID, and then you have add sub items where you can add different sub items as well. And in sub items, you can click over here to create some different sub items. You can say like, these are optional items that you can, that you should do. Option number one, make sure to cover this section of the video. Option number two, we should make sure to use this style of editing. So you can do sub items like that. And then in the description, you can add links, helpful links, description, and you know, all of the requirements of the client that you want to do within this task. And then down below you have like this one section where you can go ahead and talk to the person that is assigned to this task. And once that's done, uh, it's pretty simple. You can just leave it at that. Click on the close button to close that task. And over here, this is how it'll look like. Now, whenever someone, you know, completes a task, first they'll move it to different sections. So this is how it looks like. It will also have this small little icon that will show the priority of it. So you will know which one is high priority, which one is low priority. So this is how you create tasks. Now, another cool thing that you should know is if you click on this button right here, you can go ahead and select different views. So right now we have the board view. Let's say we want to go ahead and switch it to table view and click on create. And now we have the table view of the project. So here you will see assignees, task number one, status over here, start date and everything. And if you want, you can add different columns to this table by clicking on this plus button. And you can see all these different options that you have over here. So you can go ahead and do that. You can sort different tasks by different priorities. You can sort them by group. All tasks are going to be over here. And if you click on fields, you can see all the fields that are, you know, currently available to you. And you can go ahead and toggle which field you want active and which one you want to deactivate. It's pretty cool. So this was the simple version. I also want to check out another the other one is also this one was the simple agile let's go ahead and select the structure project and click on select to create that one so that we can see how this one will look like as well so this is how it looks like if we click on boards this is how it looks like pretty simple very similar to the previous one it just means that it has different types of you know tasks in it so, and different priorities and set but you know pretty similar to the previous one so we're gonna go with the simple agile one as well and also 
as you might have seen within these projects, let's say you want to create a new project, right? Let's say you want to delete this project. Let's say we don't want this project and so you want to create a new one. So to do that, we just simply click on this plus button. It's going to open up the option right here, whether you want to create a folder or a project depends on you. So let's say we want to create a folder and within it, we create a folder name or we can, you know, whatever name we want. And then we can also set the privacy of it. So we can go with private shared with the team or specific users and group depends on you. So for now, we'll go ahead and say specific users and groups. And over here, we'll just say the VIP section. And then over here, you can select which default view that you want, boards, tables, or whatever. We're going to select boards for now. And then just simply click on the create button to create the tasks. And that is how you do it. And now you can go ahead and click on these three buttons and you can add items within this folder. So you can add a task, project, or a folder, or a subfolder, if you will, within this folder. And that is how you can manage some of your own projects within projects so keep that in mind and of course i already showed you how you can add different tasks and how you can move them around next thing i want to show you guys is apps and integration so if you click on this your profile settings or option and it'll open up this pop-up and here you can see you have settings workspace appearance recycle bin apps and integration mobile apps and everything so if you click on apps and integration it's going to open up the different applications that you can integrate right with so you have netsuite right here right for mac we have ms teams outlook gmail zoom slack so if you already have a slack based business you can go ahead and quickly connect it with your right account by just simply clicking on the application and just simply go ahead and click on enable button to enable it and then if you've logged in into your account you are good to go so you can see you have a bunch of different applications to go ahead and choose from almost all the application i would say are over here we have right sync right integrate and authorized applications as well so now that you know how to you know create or use right let's go ahead and actually try to create and show you how i would go ahead and set up my account right and set up my task so let's say right here we have different tasks so over here i'll add different tasks so I'm simply going to go ahead and fill out this form. All right. So now that we have some different, you know, topics at hand, we can go ahead and see who this person is assigned to right here. We have different description right here. So we have like a note right here that says, you know, make sure to do this. This is a note, of course. So we will just go ahead and select heading number two. Actually, that's a little bit too big. Maybe heading number four. All right. There you go. So something like that. And then we have description here. We'll add the description that we want of the video. And then down below we have the, as I said before, the comma section. And here we have the attachment here. People can come over here and attach the different attachments to it, like the video itself, the editing with the thumbnail. So they can go ahead and add it to. And over here, these are the new tasks. And in progress, we can go ahead and add that. And then over here, we have these different options right so instead of maybe in progress and complete and on hold i would like to change some of them right so instead of cancel we'll just say there has been some sort of issue actually we'll leave cancel then instead of on hold we'll say can we not change the name of this so we'd like to change it but we couldn't because it says right here if we click on the columns which says right here to edit the status columns choose a plan so we have to choose a plan, but I would have picked something else like maybe over here, I would have selected uploaded onto the channel or uploaded onto the drive. And maybe over here, add a new column that would, you know, have links to all of them. So, you know, something like that, that would be really, really helpful. So we could do something like that. So now whenever someone, you know, you know, completes a task, we just put it over there and it is completed. Pretty simple. Also, there's different views of these different uh, you know plans so as i said before if you click on the view we have different charts so we've already taken a look at the you know table and the board view let's go ahead and take a look at the chart one and we'll click on okay here we have the chart view and in the chart view we can see we have all of our tasks are going to be over here number of tasks right here number of projects here the default window is over here where we can see you know, we have one new task, two are completed, one is on hold. And over here, we have one deleted workflow. And over here, we can see different types of chart views. So if you want, we can go with a graph type or a circular graph view. We have these bars ones, stacked columns. Then we have these percentage. We have these bars right here. 
So over here, this one, you know, shows default workflow. And over here, we have different ones. So within these different charts, we can open it up and see all of the progress that has been currently made. So this one was the first one. And if we click on add more right here, we can add a new metric, a whole new metric. And over here, we can select what we would like to examine closely. So let's say we want to examine progress. So we click over here. As you can see, this is how it would look like. So tracking progress is 40%. And if we click on the charts right here, we can see all of the progress. So if I click on, let's say, each one of them, and I select status assignee or you know status by group, we can go ahead and see more options within these charts. So as you can see, it looks pretty simple, looks pretty cool. We can even group them by different sections as well, by different options like status assignee, others. And if you want, we can even select, let's say, importance. So if we click on importance, we can see all of the different importance options right here. So that was the, the chart view. And you guys now know how you can go ahead and select different views. But as I said before, if you wanted to add new metrics, you can go ahead and create a new metric and select that one as well. And of course, we have other options as well. So if we click on more, we have reports, my to do's, calendars, and created by me. So over here in my to do's, I definitely want to go ahead and select some of them. So over here, we have risk assessment, right? So if we click on risk assessment, we can see we have different options right here. This is a task that we have created. And then over here, we have create project timeline. These were options that came with the other template that I imported. But over here, if you want, you click on the new items, you just enter in a new item. So let's say this is our to do tasks for the day. We can type anything we want. So let's go ahead and say, check the update on the team or check on the team, whatever you want to call it. And then just simply hit the next button. And now we have the tasks. So also in this over here option, right if we click on this task uh, we can see what type of option it is so for example if i wanted to create a new item let's say you know we have these this option right here so if we click over here we can go ahead and see more options but currently i can't seem to get that option so we'll leave it at that so now that, that task is completed over here you can go ahead and check them out as a list and then you can just simply go ahead and move it on so over here this is like a checklist type of option so right here, you can go ahead and change the view. So task list displayed, hierarchical or plain. You can go with this one, duration or one line or two line as well. It depends on you. But yeah, I think this looks good. And over here, you can track all of your tasks. And then you have your reports. Here you will get all the reports necessary from your, you know, all of the workspaces. But of course, for this one, you have to upgrade your plan. And then you have a stream option as well where you get all of the updates on your task. You know, you basically get a stream view of all of your tasks and how they are doing. And then you also have star tasks where you can go ahead and see some of your favorite tasks. But yes, these were all the important things that you needed to know about Rike and how you can use it to go ahead and manage all of your projects. So very simple. This is how you do it. This is how you use Rike. And if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment sections what you guys think about this video. And of course, Having said that, thank you for watching and until next time, take care and goodbye.